Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. You are with me, Madam Nur Farhani Bidijasli from Unit Physics College Matriculasi, Johor. In this video, I am going to demonstrate Experiment 1, Measurement and Uncertainty. At the end of this lesson, students should be able to measure and determine the uncertainty of physical quantities. Measuring is important in any physical experiment. During measurement, the value obtained is not exactly accurate due to errors that we made. Therefore, as a rule, the uncertainty of a measurement must be taken and it has to be recorded together with measured value. This is the overview for the measurement and uncertainty information. The first, a measurement depends on following properties. It depends on the accuracy of the measurement. It means how close of a reading compared to the actual value. Second, the sensitivity of the equipment or the device or the apparatus. It means the ability of a device to detect a small change in a measurement. And the third one is the precision of the measurement or the equipment. It means the ability of a device to remain consistency in every measurement. For the single reading, here is how to write the uncertainty. If the reading is taken from a single point or at the end of the scale, so the uncertainty of x or the delta x is equivalent to 1 over 2 multiplied with the smallest division from the scale. If the readings are taken from two points on the scale, so the delta x is 2 times half times the smallest division from the scale. And if the apparatus uses a vernier scale, the delta x is equal to 1 multiplied with the smallest unit from the vernier scale. For the repeated readings, this is how we calculate the uncertainty of x. So, for a set of n repeated measurements of x, the best value is the average value. And here is the formula to calculate the average. That means, you are total up all the data and divide by the number of measurements taken. So, the uncertainty is given by this formula, which is, you have to minus the average with the data and divide by the number of measurements taken. And your result should be written as this form, which is x equals to the average x plus minus the delta x. Okay, for the third concept is the combination of uncertainties. We will adopt maximum uncertainty. So, this is going to be how the formula to get the delta x. If you come across the addition or subtraction, so the x equals to, for example, a plus b minus c, therefore, the delta x will be equals to the delta a plus the delta b plus delta c. For the second case, for the multiplication with constant k, for example, x equals to ka, so to calculate the delta x, it is equals to k multiplied with the delta a. Next, if we come across with the multiplication or division, for example, x equals to a, b over c, so to calculate the delta x, it is going to be calculated like in this equation, in this formula. The delta x over the x is equals to the delta a over a plus the delta b over b plus the delta c over c. And lastly, for the powers. If we have the equation like x equals to a power of n, so to calculate the delta x, it is going to be in this formula. The delta x over x is equals to the power n multiplied with the delta a over a. 
Now we go to the how you are going to take reading for the following apparatus. First one is the vernier caliper. The vernier caliper found in the laboratory incorporates a mean scale and a sliding vernier scale which allows reading to the nearest 0.02 mm. It is used to measure small lengths accurately. Let's look into the features of the vernier calipers. So we have the internal jaws at the top of the vernier calipers. Then we have the outside jaws at the bottom of the vernier calipers. This is the vernier scale and this is the main scale. Here is the lock screw. Okay, and the next one is the bar and the death rod. Okay, let's look at one example how to take a reading. If you look at here, the main scale, the first reading on the main scale immediately to the left of the zero of the vernier scale. So, in this example, it shows by the letter A. So, the reading shows it is 1.1 cm. And then, next, we read the vernier scale. Mark on the vernier scale which exactly line up or coincides with a mark on the main scale. So, in this example, we can see that this is the line where it coincide, coincides. So, the reading is 0.22 mm. Bear in mind, the vernier scale down here gives you in unit millimeter. Therefore, we have to convert into centimeter. So, it becomes 0.022 centimeter. So, for the actual reading, you have to multiply sorry you have to plus a and b together in the same unit so the actual reading is 1.1 cm plus with 0.022 cm therefore the actual reading is 1.122 cm Next, we go to the micrometer screw gauge. The micrometer screw gauge is used to measure even smaller dimensions than the vernier calipers such as diameter of fine wires, diameters of spheres, the thickness of paper, and similar small length. So, here are the features in your micrometer screw gauge. We have the anvil face, we have the spindle face, and this is called as the spindle. Next, we have the lock nut. And here is going to be where are we going to look at the reading. It is on the sleeve. This is the frame. And last one, this is the thimble and ratchet. Let's look at how take a reading. For example, up here, we have the main scale on the left side and the vernier scale on the right side. So, if you look at here, the main scale and the vernier scale are the same, are in the same unit, which is millimeter. So, first, we read on the main scale. So, the main scale tells you it is 11.0 millimeter. Okay, and next one is your vernier scale. So, your vernier scale, like in vernier calipers, you go to the where the line coincides. Here, here is the vernier scale reading, which is 0 0.48 millimeter. This is going to be at the top, this is going to be at the bottom. 
so it is 0.48 mm. The actual reading for this one is 11.0 mm plus with 0.48 mm, so it is 11.48 mm. Okay, next example, we look at here. So, we read the main scale first. So, here we have at the main scale, it is 7.5 mm. At the vernier scale, the reading is 0.24 mm. The actual reading is 7.74 mm. Hopefully, you get and how to read the reading from the micrometer screw gauge. We go to the next one. This is the traveling microscope. The traveling microscope is the instrument for measuring length with a precision in the order of 0.01 mm. One of the uses of it is to measure very short distances precisely. For example, the diameter of a capillary tube. It is going to be in your experiment after this. The stitch carries a vernier that travels over a stainless steel scale graduated in millimeter 0 to 16.5 cm. The vernier read in 0.01 mm. Okay, here is the body of the traveling microscope. So we have the vernier scale up here, we have the vertical vernier here. And you are going to place the object below the lens over here. And you can see through the eyepiece to get the correct crosshair. This is the knob for the focusing. And this is the screw for fine position adjustment. And up here at the bottom part. It is the horizontal scale and the horizontal veneer. And last one, this is the rail. Okay, how to read the reading from the traveling microscope? You have two examples here. So the first one, if you look at, at this picture, so we have to read the main scale first. It's like in your vernier calipers. So first, you read the main scale and you can see the lines before the zero of the vernier scale is 7.1 cm. Okay, before that, let me remind you the main scale is in cm while the vernier scale is in mm. So, you have to get the same unit for both main scale and vernier scale. So, for the main scale, you have to convert into millimeters. Alright, so we have the main scale 7.1 cm. Therefore, our reading in millimeter, it should be 71.0 mm. Next, we read through for the vernier scale. So, in this vernier scale, where is the line coincides with the main scale? Here it is. So, it tells you the reading for the vernier scale is 0.45 mm. So, you have total up the main scale and the vernier scale. So, the actual reading is 71.45 mm. Are you okay? I hope you are with me. Okay, now next go to the next example. So the next example is we can see over here the main scale it gives you the reading of 7.25 cm. So you have to convert into millimeter so it becomes 72.5 millimeters. And here, 
we can read through either you refer to the lower scale of the veneer scale or you can refer to the upper scale in your veneer scale so if i refer to the lower scale so the veneer scale tells you the reading is 0.25 mm so my reading my actual reading is 72.75 mm or you can read from the upper scale in your vernier scale so here we just have the main scale up here so the main scale here is 7.20 cm okay and the vernier scale is 0.75 mm up here therefore my actual reading is 72.75 mm so what is the difference between these two okay if you look at at the first part when you choose your main scale is 7.25 so you have to read the lower scale but then if you choose your main scale is 7.20 cm so you have to choose the upper scale all right okay